This August marks the 72nd anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The atomic bombs were dropped in 1945. It's estimated that about 140,000 people died in Hiroshima by the end of that year. Since then, many more have died and suffered from the effects of radiation. Today is the second installment of our Hiroshima Nagasaki series. Miyasu Mon, an announcer from Radio Japan's Myanmar section, visited Hiroshima to report on how the people there are conveying their message to the world. From our studios at NHK in Tokyo, I'm Eriko Kojima. And I'm Yoshi Ogasawara. This is the first visit to Hiroshima for Miyasu, an announcer from Myanmar. She says the photograph from her history book in Myanmar that made the strongest impression on her was that of the atomic bomb dome. I am standing in front of the atomic bomb dome. The summer sun is brightly shining on it. It used to be a grand three story European style building, but because it was located only 160 meters from the hypo center, it was greatly damaged and deformed. I find it very emotional to actually come to the place that I saw in my textbook. Miyasu then headed to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum to learn about the damage caused by the atomic bomb. Many items on display there show the devastation caused by the bomb, such as the clothes and watches worn by the victims, roof tiles burnt by heat rays, and glass bottles and teacups deformed by fire. <laughs> How hot it must have been! I imagine that it must have been like hell. Overseas visitors to the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum continue to increase every year. Their numbers exceed 300,000 annually. Museum officials are taking steps to allow visitors to hear the accounts of the hibakshas, or atomic bomb survivors. For instance, the museum holds lectures and invites hibakshas to speak. The hibaksha will give a talk in Japanese and an interpreter will translate into English. Visitors can also watch videos of hibaksha's testimonies with English subtitles. We asked the director of the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum, Kenji Shiga, to tell us about the role the museum is playing in conveying Hibakusha's messages to the world. The duty of this museum is to show people all over the world what happened on August 6, 1945, the day the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. It's best to come to the museum and see the victims' belongings and the items damaged by radiation. But as the survivors grow older, time is running out for them to tell their stories. The Hibakshas often say they do not want anyone to go through what they went through. Their experiences were dreadful beyond words. So I think it's meaningful for people from abroad to listen to some of the experiences. And try to imagine what happened in Hiroshima 72 years ago. A video conference over the internet provides an opportunity for people in foreign countries who cannot come to Hiroshima to talk directly with the Hibakshas. This project began in 2010, and so far, people from 22 countries have spoken with the survivors. Hello, Ogura san. How wonderful to see you. The paper cream is、uh, the symbol of peace. 80 year old atomic bomb survivor Keiko Ogura was 8 years old when the atomic bomb was dropped. She was 2.4 kilometers away from ground zero. 
At the age of 42, she began studying English on her own and has been relating her story to foreigners in English. On this day, she spoke to 160 students in Australia in a video conference over the Internet. How wonderful to see you. Yes, I'm very well, and we are so excited to see you. There are 160... On the day the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Ogura was on the street north of her house. Suddenly, she was engulfed in a blinding flash of light and thrust against the road by a ferocious blast that followed. She wasn't severely hurt, but on her way home, a sticky so-called black rain containing radioactive substances began to fall. I was eight years old when the bomb was dropped. This is the area and the black rain fell. My house was around here, so I have experienced a black rain falling. I couldn't understand what's this, you know, and uh, I touched my hair, wet the hair, and there are many gray spots on my clothes. I returned my home. After being just dark, and uh, this is my house, those are pieces of glass, hundreds of thousands of pieces of glass stuck on the wall of my house. And then everything, the furniture is gone, and the roof tiles are scattered. My father was so fortunate, he was behind the big pine tree, and he was safe. Later, her house was overflowing with injured relatives, friends, and neighbors, and was filled with odors of blood, pus, mud, burnt hair, and excrement. Her brother, who returned with burns on his face and hands, said that Hiroshima was a sea of fire. Upon hearing this, Ogura stepped outside to head to a nearby shrine on a hill to observe the town. She encountered a line of people in torn clothes who had suffered burns and serious injuries. They were trying to flee the city. The Australian high school students listened intently to Ogura's talk. There were so many wounded people squatting in line on the street. And then all of a sudden, somebody called my, my uncle, seized my uncle, and said, give me water in low voice. But as soon as hearing uh, water, everybody started to say, water, 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 they said. I ran back to my home, and there was a well near the gate. I got the water and they delivered water, but among them there were a couple of people who died immediately after drinking water in front of me. Can you imagine? I was just eight years old girl. I was shocked. But the worst thing happened. In the evening my father returned home and said, you didn't give water, did you? My father said. And then my brother said, everybody knows we shouldn't give water. I didn't, my, my brother said. So I said, oh, I didn't do such a stupid thing. I told a lie. Those days I did not know that, and people were educated. You shouldn't give water to the people who had the burn, the severe burn and so on. If you give water, they will be dead soon. They will die immediately after drinking water. I don't know why they believed that. So my trauma started, my nightmare started. Every night for a long time, I saw nightmare, and I recall dreadful those days. Ogura always felt guilty and blamed herself for her foolishness. Only after 20 years was she finally relieved of her suffering. For the first time, I told my story over 20 years to my friend, and then my friend said, Keiko, no, no, it's not your fault. It's that time, whether you gave water or not, 
That's the right time they died. They had such kind of destiny. She comforted me. Then my doctor may have disappeared. After the talk was over, one of the students, Andrew, asked Ogura about those affected by the bomb. Um, what support is needed in The only thing what we can do is convey our heart that everybody should survive. And then please imagine somebody you love, such kind of beloved people will be killed instantly by nuclear weapon. So now what we have to do is to abolish total nuclear weapon, not only using, even possessing nuclear weapon on this planet is very dangerous, we are afraid. The always we exist, we live with the fear. I don't, I can't stand such, such a fearful situation. So we don't need to see the world that's nuclear weapon. Another student, Elena, asked how they could cultivate nonviolence. My question is, what is the one hope or wish for the future of the younger generations in terms of creating peace? As one of survivors, you know, the most important thing I feel that uh, hand our stories down to the future generations. We're telling my story continuously. We can do something toward uh, toward the future, and uh, all the world uh, need to know what happened here. So you can help me hearing my story and tell to others that this is the most important peace activity that I feel. Another student, Luke, shared his thoughts on Ogura's talk. I think from Kato's story. The most important thing that we can do as young people is to pass her story on to others so they know the experiences that she went through were horrifying, that war is terrible, and that we should never be able to repeat what she went through again, that war is unnecessary. After listening to the exchange between Ogura and the students, Miyasu realized the importance of continuing to spread the message. I was able to learn about how disastrous the atomic bomb and wars are and how precious peace is. I was deeply moved by Ms. Ogura's efforts to learn English so she could communicate her message to the world. It couldn't have been an easy task. We must each do our part for peace. Today was the second installment of our series on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We had a look at how the people of Hiroshima are trying to convey their message of peace to the world. Tomorrow we'll focus on how people are using photographs to communicate the reality of the atomic bomb.